I wanted to loop back to ball corners and just do another video on a slightly, you know, the original ball corner video, it was the easiest case, right? And I wanted to show what it looks like with uh, surfaces that have curvature to them instead of just a standard box corner with flat surfaces. Show a slightly different technique for the trimmed corner and how we achieve that. And, but also really just to show that, that the basics of that video really carry over into something that has curvature. So if you understand how to do that first ball corner video, episode 10, if you get those concepts, this should all be really reviewed. There's nothing, I'm, I'm going to show a little bit of a twist, a variation, but everything that I do is going to be exactly the same as that. Um, so here's here's the goal. This is this is a nice you know soft corner. This is much more like a sub D box corner, right? Whereas last time we had all sharp, you know, sh flat. We had flat sided surfaces. So this is our goal, and this is what our final surfaces look like. Should be no mystery here, right? We have a trimmed corner here. That's the only one. Everything else is split by ISO curve. We've got some what are effectively blend surfaces between the primary surfaces, right? So how do we get to this, right? Well, so we start, we start with this, right? These are just, these are my super simple primary surfaces. They all are the same point count and degree. Of course, you know, they don't have to be in this case. Um, they just happen to be. And this is just stuff that I created quickly just by point editing, uh, you know, up upping the degree and point editing a flat plane. So, as you could imagine from a lot of my videos, we're gonna start with a little sphere, just as a sizing guide, okay? And then I'm gonna intersect this all around here. Awesome, and delete the sphere. And I'm going to split by isocurve, all of these surfaces here and toggle. There we go. Good. And do the same thing here. We're going to split it. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's split it first here and let's toggle here. Good. We'll do the same thing here and toggle and awesome. I'm going to throw all this stuff out. Great. Now we're going to make some blends. Um, we're going to use Blend Curve and use this as an input for uh, for doing our, our uh, blend surfaces, right? For using surface from edge curves. We're going to use curvature, as I showed you in the previous video. This is really important when you're using blend curve. For instance, if we bump up the scale here, I don't like the shape of that at all, right? That seems a little silly. Let's just edit the curvature here. Great, that's more of what I'd be looking for. That looks fine. Now, you could, you know, I don't use blend curve or uh, a blend surf, and I've gone through that in the video on which which Rhino commands make clean surfaces. And I realized one of the reasons why I don't is that you actually can't look at your curvature in blend surf. So there's a variety of reasons why I don't like using Rhino's blend surf, why I strongly prefer the VSR one. And one of them is that you're blind as to the curvature of the surfaces that you're creating while you're creating them. Um, and so another advantage of using this sort of using blend curves and using show curvature and then doing surface from edge curves is that you can actually see roughly what the curvature of your surface is going to look like when you create them. 
So now, having created all of those blend curves, I'm just clicking through to do this, and all of these should be, you know, lovely, perfect point count and degree surfaces. Exactly what I would expect. I'm going to delete these. Wonderful. Let's delete this. Now we're going to run match surf. We're going to run multiple matches, and we're just going to go through these real quick. Boom. Boom. And we want curvature, automatic, and that's it. That's, those are the only options that we want. We want to match by curvature. We have our curves were curvature. We want our surfaces to be curvature. Again, we're going to fill this. This is eventually going to be a four-sided hole. If we want to fill a four-sided hole with all this stuff going on, to tan even just a tangency, it helps us, us if everything around it is done to curvature. So... Curvature, automatic, again, multiple matches. Okay, now, if you don't have VSR, you can use zebra stripes to analyze your continuity. I'm going to use VSR for the sake of brevity on this. And let's see here. So we wanna get everything really low. I can see like edge three here is not great for tangency. Edge two here is not great at all for curvature. Uh, let's see, like zero, zero, one. These are actually really great. And let's look at five and four. Uh, five could be better for sure. Um, so I'm just going to really quick improve the matching on all of these. One thing... To, be, to note is that even though these are all the same degree across here, sometimes you actually need a higher degree to match. Uh, so if you want to really get a really good clean match, sometimes you actually need to bump the degree up. So I'm going to change the degree on all of these. And I'm going to leave it as 5, and I'll bring it up to I don't know, 4 is fine on all of them. So four and five, good. Change degree again. This is, again, this is all just review. And then I'm gonna run through and I'm gonna match these again. Super simple. So, takes a little more setup than the, the planar example, but not a lot. So we've got really, you can see like we upped the degree, we ran match again, and now look at how low all of our, like our tangency values, like the tangency breaks are in the 10 thou. <sighs> That's wonderful. And then this stuff is all, of course, super, super low as well. Our highest is this zero edge here, like 0.06 for curvature. That's barely any break whatsoever. Okay, so last time we moved this edge this way and we moved this edge this way, thereby clearing some space for us to make a, uh, to make a four-sided hole. Well, there's a different, we can certainly do that. That's, that's certainly an option. We can still do that if we want. But I wanna show you a slightly different way of doing it. And you can get away with this if, if say, if you decide like, well, actually like this blend here, it's fine if this blend is slightly bigger than these blends in terms of the setback. This is great on like really sort of loose, soft stuff um, where you don't need an exact setback on these things. So what we do actually is we're gonna split, we're gonna split this back, toggle. We're gonna move it back like this. And we're gonna do the same thing here. And I'm just gonna eyeball this roughly the same size. And this to here. And then we actually, I made excess work for myself. 
we're not going to use this now. We're going to get rid of this. Because what we're going to do we're going to recreate this blend here. Surface from edge curves. Boom, 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 boom. I'm just straight away going to change degree on this, just like I did it on the other ones. Up to four, leave it at five. Match surf, multiple matches. Curvature, automatic. Let's check it. Four and five. Beautiful, perfectly curvature and tangent. Okay, so you see what we did there. We, you know, everything was lined up with this corner off this corner here, and all we did was we just trimmed by isocurve this surface and this surface back. Right? We didn't change any of the definition of these surfaces. We just split them by isocurve, and we did the same thing here. And in doing that, we opened up this to be our trimmed corner, blend curve. That doesn't need to be, there we go. That looks fine. Now, surface from edge curves. Awesome. Turn this on, beautiful. Match surf. Multiple matches. We're now going to match it on all three sides. We're going to ignore this, which will become our trimmed edge. But we're going to ignore that for now. Curvature, automatic. Now, there's a lot of shared verts going on here, right? Like these four are shared between this edge and this edge. These four are shared between this edge and, well, eventually this edge here, right? So there's a lot of shared verts. So let's check our continuity, right? We're not even tangent. Let's see if we're curvature. We're curvature, but not tangent, right? And some of these were not that great in terms of curvature. The solution, as I showed in my matching video, is to up degree and match again. So we're gonna go to six by six, and then we're gonna say match surf, multiple matches. Curvature, automatic, still the right answer. Let's bring this up. Okay, we're getting better. We're getting there. Um, but even eight is like 0.17 degrees. So we're going to do it again. We're going to, now we're going to go up another to seven by seven. Match surf, multiple matches. Nope, oh, nope, ha. So, oh gosh. Beautiful. F5. There we go. Beautiful. These are all nice and low, right? So with all those shared verts, it helps to have more control, more points, higher degree. Because we have so many shared verts, we have got all these corners with shared verts. Now that I have these three edges happy, only now, only after I've done that, I'll pull this edge onto here. I'll split this with that curve. I'll delete the curve. I'll delete this little surface. And we're gonna set this to start with, let's try for tangency here. Oh, and I saw something. So you watch this. this the way that these get trimmed, sometimes there's little breaks in them. So when I say like match surf, 
what I noticed was that the edges moved over, right? This is this is the surface edge, and so it doesn't see it sees this as one curve, and it and it sees a break here. So what you want to do is you want to use your merge edge tool, rhinos, and I just go and I say all, and then I go back and I split them at this end point and this end point. Awesome. And then I'm going to say match surf. And I'm going to say preserve isocurve direction, match by closest points. For now, I'm going to say tangency. See how it goes. Wonderful. And let's analyze it, see what it looks like. So this is not curvature right now, but it is tangent. And it's very, very well tangent. So you can certainly try to get everything curvature. If you can't make everything curvature, for me, I would just leave this edge as tangent. But let's try. Let's see what happens. May or may not happen. We're doing multiple matches at curvature by closest points so we don't mess up this edge. All these other edges have already been set. Uh, so there is no difference between closest points and matching exactly along these edges because we, we've already set them. So we're going to keep closest points and we're going to keep preserve isocurve direction. We've, we've shaped our isocurve direction earlier by using the automatic option when we were only matching these three, these, these untrimmed edges. They're split edges, but they're untrimmed. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so this is not going to curvature. And you could certainly keep upping the degree on this whole thing, inserting geometry. Uh, for me, I think I think more important is the design intent. Right, so everything's watertight. We can zebra this. Oh gosh, of course, the direction's flipped. Ha. Flip it back out. Zebra. Awesome. So you get nice you get nice flow through here. I'm less worried about this little trimmed edge, to be perfectly honest. I, unless you're trying to do class A surfacing, I would not sweat that. All right, so hopefully that shows you just how versatile that approach is, how this gives you another tool, right? This sort of move the edge back here, move this one back, same thing here, open it up to be four-sided from a three-sided problem instead of just modifying this edge here. So there's just two different ways to do it, subtle variations, but both are equally applicable and both are great tools to have in your toolbox. All right, hope you enjoyed that.